I'd say anytime you're ready, let her rip. The sound of the table saw. Get used to it, you're going to be using one. According to the Journal of Trauma in the United States, last year 31,400 people were fortunate enough to visit the emergency room because of a table saw accident. 93% of those injuries were fingers or thumbs. 66% were lacerations that required stitches. 10% required amputation. My name is Al Moshe, and I'm going to give you a basic overview speech of how to use a table saw safely. Slide, please. <clears throat> Don't be like Beavis here. What's at risk are your fingers, your hands, your arms, your eyes, flying debris, spinning blades. These are things you need to be prepared for. And if you use common sense, you won't have to deal with them. OK, first thing, PPE. That's personal protection equipment. You will use it in the wood shop, or you will not have a job here. These things are very simple. Eye protection. Safety glasses, not your sunglasses. Something that can stop an impact that won't shatter and leave pieces in your eyes. Now I won't put these on because I don't want to yell at you. Hearing protection. I will pass these around. These lower the noise floor in the shop. Table saws make noise. <clears throat> Other equipment in the wood shop make noise. Those protect your ears from taking damage. Anything over 90 decibels on a sustained period of time can do permanent hearing damage. Now, <clears throat> we don't want that. We want to have a safe work environment. Okay, this is the common sense here, as far as I'm concerned, rules of the table saw. Before you use any piece of equipment with a cutter on it, you inspect that piece of equipment. Make sure there's no loose bolts. Make sure the blade is in place. Okay? Now, <clears throat> before you turn the saw on, you're going to measure everything. You have to set up the cut. A wise man once told me, measure twice, cut once. And hilarious boss I had one said, damn it, I've cut this board twice and it's still too short. <laughs> However, if you spend the time measuring properly with the saw turned off and unplugged, you won't cut your fingers off and you'll have a successful cut. The next thing, your eyes are very important when you're using this equipment. Never, ever take your eyes off the blade. The most common cause of accidents in these shops is a distraction. Someone calls your name and you turn around while you're pushing something through a saw. That's a disaster waiting to happen. The next most common form of problem with the table saw is you only push through a saw blade. I worked with a gentleman who had to have more than a dozen surgeries to put his fingers back on after he pulled a piece of masonite back through a saw. Eighth-inch masonite you can break with your fingers, but it will take your fingers off when it comes out of that blade and speed. Slide, please. Now, we have tools we can use to make this, this job a little safer. This tool here is called a miter fence. When you're going to cut something at an angle on a table saw, you don't just freehand it and wing it through there because it can bind the blade and kick back. It can break pieces off. So that miter fence, not only does it allow you to cut an angle that's straight, you can clamp your, your work to that fence. It allows you to have a safe work piece without things flying back at you. This one down here on the bottom is called a push stick. And I brought a couple examples of those. This is a homemade one that has a few miles on it. You can see that the saw blade is actually come in contact with this. But that's better than your fingers. These are another type of push stick. These lay flat on the stock. And you would take them and push work through the saw so that your fingers are not in the way. Now, these are inexpensive devices to use. They're a lot cheaper than a trip to the emergency room. And last but not least, when we're doing a long rip, like in that first picture, this is called a featherboard. The stock has to push against this featherboard to go through the blade. If it gets kicked back, this will stop it from retracting it. Now, there's a combined total of about $30 in tools right here. Slide <clears> through. <throat> A safe shop produces quality work because the tools all work. They've all been inspected. They've been maintained. 
happy clients come from quality work. And if we're safe in our shop, and we follow these very simple rules. And those rules were, anybody? Safety's first. We're going to never take our eyes off the saw. We're always going to push things through that blade. That'll keep you from reaching across the blade and doing things that are dangerous that could cause you to injure yourself. You follow these rules, you'll get 20 years worth of work and have all your fingers just like me. Thank you very much.